Good morning everyone, welcome to part two of our Scotland road trip. Uh, we're driving up to Loch Ness this morning and then coming back down to Glenfinnan Viaduct. We're currently in Fort William. Morning. Start the day with a bit of a drone. Guess you're not allowed to fly here. Why? Restricted airspace. Really? Yeah. I mean, I suppose that's good of the app to tell me that, but it's like your aircraft has entered a restricted airspace uh, you bear all responsibility for it and then there's a privacy statement which is like all your details will be passed over and it's like nah <laughs> well that's Loch Ness you just can't fly it oh well. we've uh, arrived into Glenfinnan now and uh, this has been one of the one of the stops I've been really looking forward to for Scotland um, so there's a viaduct here and uh, it's just a train line but once a day in autumn, uh, as we are now, and twice a day in summer, there's a steam drain that goes across. Um, so we've timed it, hopefully, to arrive to watch the steam train. Uh, I've also spoken with the estate manager because it is a private estate, this whole, I think it's like 9,000 acres or something. <coughs> um, so I've spoken with him over email and I uh, got permission to fly the drone. Did have to pay 10 pounds, which, to be honest, he owns the place, he can charge whatever he wants. Um, but I thought that's a fair deal to you know, at least guarantee access to fly the drone. There are signs about and a number to call. He's pretty understanding of it all. Yeah, so we're just hiking up now to a viewpoint to see the uh, viaduct. Um, and yeah, as a fun fact for those of you who don't know, um, this is also where they filmed a lot of the Hogwarts Express stuff. Um, not that that really catches my interest all that much. Uh, I just love steam trains. <laughs> On the back of the... Uh, Scottish £10 note, that's the viaduct. Isn't that great? Welcome to the viaduct, and the sun's out. <laughs> I just walked up round onto like this top viewing deck of the path. I'm gonna set a camera up on this tripod, um, compose it all and everything, because when the train comes, I can just reel off shots with that, as well as flying the drone, so. Good. Everyone's positioned up here like snipers. Mm. Just got back down from the uh, viaduct. What a roller coaster of just everything. Anything that could go wrong went wrong, and anything that went right um, didn't exist. <laughs> um, you guys know by now, I don't fly my drone enough, and um, there are times when it decides to not play ball and go a bit messy. But I think most of the uh, the issues that came about were actually with the rain. Um, now we know Scotland gets wet, but honestly, the rain came in so fast and so hard, it just pissed it down like all over everything. Um, so we we're quickly like rummaging, like throwing the coat over everything, uh, bringing the drone back quickly, um, you know, covering the cameras and stuff. The train hadn't even been passed at this point. I was just pre-composing my shot. Uh, and then the sun came out and then the train started to come so quickly faffing getting the drone up um, And I think it got a little bit too wet before and um, there were some issues with the camera So what I did get of the train coming through is terrible footage um, You'll see it just kind of Just all over the place um, And then I felt terrible because I was also kind of not able to concentrate on where it was flying And I think it was potentially in some people's view um, So I do feel really bad about that 
Um, if anyone was around during the day uh, getting photos and my drone is in your photos, then please do email them to me. I will happily Photoshop them out and uh, clean them up for you. Um, so I do apologize for that. But that is, I guess, a reason why um, you would get permission beforehand, as I did, and pay for that permission, as I did. Uh, what I've just found out is that my payment doesn't actually go towards the estate. It's a donation to the National Trust. So that makes me even happier um, because it's going to a better cause than, uh, you know, the wealth of someone's huge estate. Um, but the whole process was pretty sound. And um, anyway, we saw the train. What I saw with my eyes was great. Um, and the, uh, the viaduct is amazing. We're now gonna head off to, I think, Isle of Skye and um, get some lunch in the car. And that's about it. Is this cafe open? Yes. Yes? Can I have a table for one? Yes. Here is some ham, hot and egg sandwich. A delicacy from Morrison. Great. <laughs> I'm just gonna slouch down a bit, by the way. If it looks like I'm really short in this car, it's because I'm slouching down so we're not in double chin territory because I can't raise the camera up without the microphone touching. Anyway, whatever. Um, we've just been sat in the car chatting about what we could have done better in uh, the scenario that just happened. And there was a bit of a miscommunication. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> there was a bit of a miscommunication because Ellie thought I was setting up the camera to do a time-lapse. Um, and I was obviously setting it up so that I could just have it pre-composed and then I could just um, reel off shots as I was like flying the drone. I would just like sort of, you know, just grab it and, and go for it without having to like faff around with straps and stuff. But when she said that, I thought, oh, time-lapse, that'd be genius. Um, so for future reference, if anyone is planning to uh, do two camera setups or anything, set your camera to time-lapse mode and uh, just let it reel off shots because when the train's coming, you just press it and then you'll get maybe a hundred shots every two seconds or something. Um, or sorry, a shot every two seconds for like a hundred shots and you'd probably cover yourself pretty well. Um, yeah, it's always the way though when making these videos, like I love telling these stories through video and like the journeys and everything. Sometimes there's a compromise to the photos because you're concentrating on video. Sometimes there's a compromise to the video because you're concentrating on photos. Other times, you screw both of them up and uh, you come away with nothing. So that's just the way it goes with this. Um, today may have been one of those moments, but that's that's it. You can only learn from your mistakes. Exactly. That's why I love putting myself in challenging scenarios because you do learn from mistakes and next time uh, I will do something different. I probably will put my drone in the bin. <laughs> <laughs> no, next time I, will, I probably will do time-lapse setup because um, a time-lapse doesn't have to be a time-lapse, it can just be an auto-control of your camera. Yeah, when you're battling against nature, it's, um, you know, it's just an extra catalyst for destruction, isn't it? <laughs> um, it's probably a reason why you don't see that many landscape photography YouTube channels, because it is difficult to focus on the video, but the ones you do see do really well, so... Huge credit to them. I've got a wet bum. <laughs> I didn't realise how much it rained on me earlier. It's actually really windy as well. Is it? I'm gonna film or oh, shoot uh, shots of that house. <laughs> it's that house there. Get it. We've not quite, not, uh, uh, cold, <laughs> lips not working. We've not quite reached Isle of Skye yet, but driving through, uh, we were just saying, I think this has been by far the, the uh, most enjoyable place. This is so beautiful. Just loving the greenery. Some of the grass around here is luminous green. It is saturated with green. 
Um, we've had such a hot summer uh, in the UK uh, and mostly Europe to be honest. But I feel like Scotland probably just continued to have its, uh, its hydration because this is green, <laughs> so green. Um, anyway, uh, it's kind of, it's reminding me so much of New Zealand, which is why we came to Scotland anyway. Um, and it's embarrassing that it's taken us 27 years to make it all the way up here. But it's also making me think of the times that we spoke with Aussies and uh, they said they've never been to New Zealand. Um, and we were like, well, why? It's so close. But then also kind of ashamed that we'd never been to Scotland. So for those of you in Australia, get over to New Zealand, have a look at some of the nature around there. Um, and for those of you in the UK who've not been up to Scotland, get yourself up here. It's good. <laughs> I'm so cold. <laughs> My jumper is wet in the car, so not cool. Petrol time, or rather diesel time. <laughs> it's about to piss it down. <laughs> Right, I'm in the back collecting my camera stuff. So. Uh, <laughs> Hello. <laughs> We've made it up to the store in Isle of Skye. Um, it's just started raining. Thought we got away with it. It's been a good hour and a half without it raining or so. So here comes the strategy. I'm gonna leave the car when it's not raining. If we get caught in the rain, no problem, it's fine. I'll come back wet but wouldn't it be disappointing if we left whilst it's raining and then it immediately stops? <laughs> it's just air and... <laughs> we can't make it to the top. The wind's coming in. There's rain on the way. And uh, we're about three hours away from where we're staying tonight and it's getting dark. Uh, so logistics takes over and we've got to head back. Coming, the rain, the hail. Oh, it's very sharp rain. Oh my god! Ah. Shit! <sighs> Scotland, you did it again. <laughs> you fucker. <laughs> Get in. Oh god. Then soaks through. <sighs> Perfect marriage of dark bitterness and Scottish heather honey, balanced with fruit and hops. I think that's good, huh? <laughs> Dinner in Isle of Skye done, and we've now got two and a half hours drive back towards Fort William uh, to our Airbnb. Gordon. Gordon the golfer. to our Airbnb. Uh, so this concludes our little Scotland trip. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I've definitely enjoyed spending time up in Scotland uh, and I'm glad we've finally made it after all these years have never been. Um, so yeah, there's, a, there's gonna be some more travel coming up soon uh, and we do wanna do more road trips as well. So we're actually in the middle of planning a big road trip throughout Japan uh, for early next year. 
Um, but before then, I've got a few other trips coming up. So I've mentioned it before, um, so I'm going to Fotokina, that's in Germany. Uh, that's in about a week and a half or so. Uh, and then we're also doing a big trip to America and uh, so mostly New York and then Toronto and Montreal. But I am also going to be heading to Adobe Max in LA just before New York. So there's a lot of cool stuff on the horizon um, and then our big Japan trip for next year. So make sure you do subscribe if you haven't already. Check that little bell notification so you'll get updates on future videos. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching everyone. Catch you later. Bye bye.